What's happening? This is Avedon, and welcome to another episode of Beats for Breakfast, the morning show. Thank you guys for watching. We are joined by a very special guest. We have OJ from Player Essence joining us today. How you doing, man? I'm trying to just make sure I know how to, all of this works. That's, that's the first <laughs> thing that I'm doing today. But I mean, no, honestly, like I can't complain. I'm doing pretty good. I'm joined by my good friend. Avadon Smith here, Thank man. You, so I'm, I am, I am uh, hyped. I'm ready to go, man. I think it's, it's going to be a good, it's going to be a good one. Oh yeah, this is going to be a pretty dope show. Now, a lot of people who know who you know Player Essence is, and, and for those of you who don't know, a little introduction for the people who don't know who you are. Yeah, um, I'm a content creator. I've been on the YouTube platform for I think about ten years, maybe a little bit under that, but Woo. very close to ten years. Uh, creating content uh, from really bad content to slightly better content than what I used to do. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm a content creator, streamer, um, also a video editor. Um, so yeah, I just kind of just do all around, uh, you know, uh, video media, video, video media, uh, gaming and stuff like that. So been on the platform for a while, been around, but you know, I'm here. Nice. That's nice. who I am. Nice. So let me ask you a question because like you've been doing YouTube full time for quite a bit now. What was that first year like? Like that first, very first year of going full time. Like, like was that scary? You know, was it fun? Did you have moments you want to quit? Like, how was that moment? That that very first year. So um, it's funny because I it was broken up into two in terms of going full time, right? Mm -hmm. So there was the time that I tried to do full time back in like 2013, and that was the worst. Or 2012, 2013 ish. That around that time, that was hell. It was the absolute worst. I had a newborn at the time, all right? So I was juggling that, um, that really didn't like me at times. <laughs> because, you know, I really didn't like me at times. And I had to struggle with that. And just basically trying to figure out how YouTube works. I think that I was very premature. So it was horrible. It was honestly the worst time period of my life. Um, that first um, that first time that I went full time. Um, it was it wasn't good i was trying to figure things out i mean i had some success uh i hit multiple like if i had a i had a channel that had like 2,000 subscribers um i think i started up a secondary channel but that channel well you know it was doing good but it wasn't necessarily the focus that i wanted to go in and then i lost monetization on my first channel uh the website that i was running because i was doing a website since 2010 2011 ish that was just that was still strong that was on the decline of websites right so in terms of like ad revenue and stuff so it was just tough all around whether from youtube to um to my website the first time that i went full time it, it was horrible sheesh yeah and so when did it when did it become fun i gotta understand that it was horrible that could be scary that could be a bad experience when did it become fun for you well i mean it was fun don't get me wrong like if you go back and watch my videos from you know um on my old player since gaming channel like i had fun you know um i had fun i you know well, that's good reviewed games i i did stuff but it was the behind the scenes stuff it was behind the scenes stuff that was just wasn't fun at all. It was just a struggle because I didn't know exactly what focus I needed to or direction that I needed to go in. There wasn't as many examples in terms of what's going on, um, like just like looking and finding things, right? The resources necessarily weren't there and I wasn't focused enough. You know, I blame myself more so than anything, um, but I still had fun. Like I still had fun. It was still something that I enjoyed doing and why I didn't quit, you know, why I didn't quit. I, actually, uh, one of the games that really helped me through that time uh, was Fire Emblem Awakening. I've talked about this um, on my stream multiple times. I mean, that game really helped me get through and say like, hey, I do love games. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do want to cover games. There are like, I don't want to quit and not be able to cover a game like this, you know, like a Fire Emblem game or another RPG or Nintendo game. So that's what kind of helped me get through it um, through that time period and, you know, found a different job, just kind of, you know, waited and kind of felt out things, you know, and then eventually when I went full time again, I kind of had that experience, right? That failure helped me for the second time that I, uh, back in 2017, when I decided, hey, I'm gonna go full time, you know, again, I'm gonna try it again after, you know, being in the workforce and doing it on the side for the, you know, I think 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, about four years, I kind of just, you know, doing a regular job, doing all that, and then just waiting to see when I could come back, you know, so. Nice, 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 yeah. and now it's like, you blew up, man. It's like you're knocking on the door to close to 60K subscribers at the recording of this video. So you're doing a, a great job. And it's like you also cultivated a very strong community, something that people even double your size still don't have. They don't have a, com uh, 
a great community of people that are willing to support what you do on a daily basis that care about you as a content creator and that's something that i feel like a lot of people a lot of content creators miss it's like showing that you yourself matter like putting yourself in front of the content allowing people to want to invest more into you so it's it's great it's great but um thank you sir thank you sir <laughs> nah i want actually you're welcome i want you want to talk about uh one of the things you do on the daily two of the things you do every single week you have two ongoing podcasts you have oj live and you have the pe podcast and i really want you to just kind of like i could talk about some of my favorites but what are some of your favorite highlights from the from the podcast <laughs> <laughs> gotta keep it pc <laughs> 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 so, uh, oh man! <laughs> my favorite highlights from the podcast. Uh, it just it just make sure that we just keep everything uh, nice here. Okay. Uh, so the highlights. I mean, I don't run like anything crazy. It's not anything too crazy, but I mean, after I know you've been around for some of them. Yeah. Some of the late night ones have been pretty funny. Uh, I think, but some of my favorite um, times of, is like when we usually do like uh, where I talk to my audience about like. It's like stuff like in terms of like success, right? Some of the stuff like that you're doing right now, man. Yeah. Like a lot of the stuff that you're doing right now, like we talk about, hey, what do you need to do to be successful? A lot of it is like relationship advice, right? Or mm -hmm. like um, uh, schooling, uh, things like that. Uh, dealing with uh, women or dealing with uh, other people, significant other, whatever the case is. I'm glad I've had people come to me uh, during my OJ Live uh, streams, if we're going to talk about that, and say like, hey, man, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this. I'm not, I'm not a psychologist or anything, you know, but I did go to school for communication and kinesiology, so I do know different things in terms of talking to people. So I think those are some of my favorite times when people ask, like, legit have, like, real problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're there. They're, I mean, yeah, they're there to talk about games, but everybody has their own life, right? And, um... And they don't always have somebody to talk to. Sometimes we take for granted, you know, a great mom or dad or spouse. Some people don't have that, you know? It's you funny know? It's funny that you said that because I spoke about that with, um, in a previous podcast, I was invited to someone else's podcast and um, actually Mikel's podcast. And we, he, we, there was a big question about people in the gaming communities and how you have some trolls and stuff act like that as and i had to explain i said you know the reason why i don't come for trolls heads all the time because as much as i want to say they should know better or they should have a parent at home sometimes they may not sometimes they may like you just said sometimes they may not have a mother or a father at home sometimes people may have it just may be just them in the house or them taking care of their siblings or they're being taken care of by an older sibling because something unfortunate may have happened to their you know actual families there's different cases and scenarios people in foster homes which we don't have to go into that but there's so many different things that go along with that so it's like oh, absolutely there's so many different things so it's like for you to provide that onto your channel it is it's definitely a highlight because you know that's why i'm around it's like yo i could like be around and i'm i could do do doing my editing or i could be playing like a video game and sometimes i turn off the, the volume off a video game just to listen in and i'll just put, put the gate put the controller down just chime in for a little bit and go back to doing what i'm doing but it's like that's that in itself with the oj live and it's awesome and it's awesome that like you make yourself available to your entire community every almost every single day with the exception on a day like today we're, we're recording on a sunday but even on some sundays you still make yourself available and for someone of your size you say it a lot but it's actually true for someone of your size you don't see that often that someone who makes themselves that readily available and that's something that i feel some people can easily take for granted because you know they see you around but it's like when you don't really when you really look through your other subscribers list of different sizes how many people are logged in every single day i know i'm not and i'm not even close I'm, I'll, I'll be around in my discord more these days but going live all the time and actually doing face to face and talking to people about the news of, of the gaming and the news and things that is happening that that takes endurance so again much respect <laughs> I mean, it, I think it goes back to, you know, when when I was growing up, I grew up in a very um, interesting situation because, you know, I had two sisters. I had a brother. I'm the youngest. 
you know, I had, I think I had a, I think I had it pretty good. You know, I would look back and some people would say, oh man, there was some rough times in your childhood. And I'm like, yeah, maybe, but that time builds character, man. It that does. Time build char- it builds character over time. And after I got to college and everything, and I started doing communication and talking to people normally, all throughout the time, man, I would talk to people about video games like all day. I could talk about video games all day. I could talk about rap music or I could talk about, you know, whatever the case is. So it, to me, it was almost more of a natural progression. Now I was wonky coming out of college and starting this because back in like 20, 10, 20, 11, when I first started make, making my videos, I didn't know how to speak into the camera. I still spoke with the very, my boring monotone voice. You know, I didn't elevate my voice. You know, I didn't have any type of presentation, but at the same time, I still wanted to kind of just talk to people and talk about the news and talk about things. So, you know, and, and in terms of what you said, in terms of like the trolls and stuff like that, you know, and, and if you go after them, I mean, that's one of the things that I've tried at least to try to just say, hey man, like don't be so quick to ban somebody or don't be so quick. Oh to, no, you, you, <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. You but, gotta um, do what you gotta do, I understand. Some, yeah, but sometimes, sometimes like when you're talking to people, especially like when people come into the stream, they don't know that this person, right, can offer them something that they didn't know they wanted. They're so used, like like I said, I've talked about this on my stream lately. They're so used to YouTubers of even smaller size, ignoring them. So they come in and say something crazy. So lately I've been saying, hey man, relax. You know what I'm saying? Like, you wanna ask me anything? You wanna talk to me? You can talk to me. And then next thing you know, boom, I hear the little thing. They subscribed. They start saying, okay, I don't have to sit there and try to get attention because they don't get attention at home. You know, they don't get the attention. So they can come to the stream. You can get people to talk to them. We got a good community. So, I mean, I'm very proud about no, that. And I, hopefully I'm on, we can all continue going forward with that. Today, you know, with that. Um, that's, that's what I'm trying to I had somebody you know? who kind of was just randomly singing on my stream and then it's like, I joked around and I sung along with this one of the samples I was playing and Maj, you could go ahead and ban him. And I was just joking around. <laughs> I was joking around, but he was just uh, contributing to the music and everything. I could just tell it's like, you could tell by the frequency, by how someone types and the way someone types their age group, sadly, by how someone is typing. And when I saw that the person was possibly younger than where I'm at, I said, you know what? Okay, let me change my my the way I'm gonna approach this. And you're right, it could make really make a difference where you could make fo- someone feel really welcomed by just, yo, I'm not shooting you down. I see you, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And it makes it makes a difference. So definitely, like, keep keep doing that. Keep following suit because. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, I was about sorry. I just wanted to say. Although I will say, um, somebody came in. Whether you're trolling or not, somebody came in and said Chrono Trigger was overrated. He got banned instantly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the funny part? You know what the funny. <laughs> That, that you get better. There's no joking around. There's no easing you in at that point. You come in you, and say that. You know what the funny part is about you saying that? I was actually sampling Chrono Trigger today when a troll came in. That's the funny <laughs> part of that. That's the funny part. I was sampling Chrono Trigger. I'm like, and he said, I want to hear some heat. And Nick, Nick Tendo was in the chat. Like, he said, you're going to get some heat. Just wait. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's, it's funny. It's funny. But, um, I definitely want, it's funny what's about Chrono Trigger because um, before we go into like our first like commercial break, I want to just kind of talk a little bit about music and you you are a huge fan, not music, uh, games for a little bit. You're a huge fan of JRPGs and just RPGs in general. So, <laughs> so I want to say what's one aspect, since you're a huge fan, you could probably answer this better than most people I know. What's one aspect of JRPGs that you feel that can be improved upon in 2020 and beyond? Improved? Yes. Um, definitely, I would say the flow of regular battles. I think there's not many RPGs that get that right, the flow in terms of get, because like in RPGs, you fight so much, right? Mm-hmm. You fight so much, you fight so much. And there's been things that people do every now and then in terms of like speeding things up or being able to quickly access things or basically quality of life improvements, right? Mm-hmm. And I still think that there isn't many that have all of those built-in quality of life improvements in order to make battles just feel natural and seamless all the time, whether being able right. to change out equipment within the battle, you know, or being able to just get into uh, battles really quickly and being able to um, 
uh, fight quickly and level up in a decent amount of time to where it doesn't feel like it's such a grind. I mean, there's really not many RPGs can, can do that perfectly. Now, there's great RPGs that do a good job, but what games kind of do it perfectly? There's not many. I mean, there's only one, I think. That game's coming out this uh, this year, Bravely, De or Bravely, uh, Bravely Default 2. That game has a perfect flow to where you feel, it doesn't feel cheap, you know, like where someone's like play Octopath. It. You know, like where you just random encounters, you can see the enemy, you can approach them from behind and get a little, you know, uh, get a little update or get a little, or not update, but you can get a little advantage, get some extra BP, and it's fast. You can speed up the battle, you know, so you feel like you get in and out and you're constantly progressing. So I think the flow to not make uh, grinding monotonous, I think RPGs across the board can improve upon that, you know? Okay, because I, I feel like the, you said Bravely Default, which I have to play still. But the one I'll say that did it for me that I feel I'm surprised in how much they streamlined this gameplay, but Trials of Mana. The oh, Trials yeah. of Mana remake, I feel like they really streamlined the grinding aspect because one of the biggest things in the um, Super NES version is it takes a long time to level up in that game after a while. Whereas mm -hmm. I hit level seven in probably like an hour like an hour and a half, which isn't normal. It's not normal to hit that high of a level in that time span. So I would say I definitely agree with you. Like the flow of battle is something that could definitely be improved upon. Um, for me, I want to say with JRPGs, I want I want to see. Um, I want to see like less less focusing on just one one character being on on voice acting i feel like voice acting is overused in some cases and the reason why i'm saying that is because voice acting in these days i feel like it's I'm trying to use a better word for it i feel like it you could get away with almost text and just a better soundtrack in my opinion because mm -hmm. and i had this conversation in a previous interview back you know back in our day when we was playing games and stuff the music told the story for you because you didn't have voice actors to tell the story that's quoting my cousin who i interviewed uh, for the previous episode you didn't have voice actors to tell the story you had to have the music tell the story and i feel as though there should be a good better fusion between music and the voice acting put together and i think the only game i've been seeing do that well from my impressions has been i'm not i'm not hyping to give up when i say this but ff7 remake and that's only because oh, there's, there's nothing wrong with hyping the game <laughs> it's gonna be good <laughs> i'm only saying that because of the film scoring route that they're going in that's mm. That's the only reason why like the music slows down and then the voice acting picks up at different points. It is like it's filmed like it's a movie. And since technology is evolving and JRPG is evolving, I feel like just a regular voiceovers does is not going to cut it. So I feel just the quality of voice acting is something that I want to see improved upon in 2020 moving forward. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Cool. So um, before we go any further, we're going to go into a quick commercial break. I want you guys to see, uh, check out some of OJ's content. Uh, does great work, especially when it comes to uh, JRPGs. Um, in fact, you guys will get to see some Bravely Default. If you hear my background, it's a Sunday. It's early. Kids are still awake. <laughs> so that's why you probably hear a little stuff in my background. No, it's, 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 it's a family show. <laughs> it's a family show. We got to have them in so. at some point. So yeah, but um, definitely we'll catch you guys soon and we'll be back. You can have freelance, which is just the default class and all of them have their own specialties in terms of what weapons they can use and how good they can use them. And on top of that, you can dual wield, you can single wield, you can have the option to go no weapons at all, get some buffs from the monk class, more critical hit power. There's just so many ways to mix and match and put your character together. It really kind of puts the shame at times what Octopath Traveler did because it really does feel like a light version of a far more complex system. Like they broke off some of it, but in Bravely Default 2, they make it to where it's very easy and very, I would just say, inviting to kind of switch classes, see what you can do, play around with it, learn, because you learn and you get experience quickly 
to learn all the different classes. So you're constantly learning new skills and abilities, changing your classes, and you can find the one that fits best for you. But it all comes together with the main class and also the subclass. So to me, it just works better. It feels great to play. The fact that you can speed up the battle system to where you can get through them quicker, multiple hits, for each action that you choose, it just creates a gameplay feel that's just unlike any other RPG out there. And it and welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed that commercial break. So right now we're gonna go ahead and just we have OJ in the hot seat because this this, this as you know he's been doing content creation for about a decade now, a little bit over a decade. And being a full-time content creator takes work. I'm sure he could attest to that. He could tell you that. It's not just something that you can just wake up and say, oh, I could be a content creator and do all what I want to do. It doesn't work like yeah. that. <laughs> so <It> doesn't. I, <laughs> I, want, I want just, if you're willing to share some of your experiences, like what are some warning signs you're willing to give to someone looking to do YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, or any form of content creation full-time? Uh, warning signs, definitely jumping on the fads. Jumping on the fads can be a detrimental, catastrophic failure for you. Um, when you go into making a channel, you need to make sure that you have a focus and you need to make sure that that focus is like, it's marketable. You know what I'm saying? Like it cannot be something so niche unless you're absolutely amazing at that and you can put it together, which most people can't right it's what most people can't so don't fall for the fads and don't fall into doing what every what other somebody else is doing just because you know i mean you've got to be into something that you're passionate about and you're willing to spend the time and you've got to be you got to be willing to make sure you know to know that hey you might not make any money for a while off this you know and i think that's some of the pitfalls especially in today's day that people see because they see all these content creators making this or matt that or doing this or that and they think well i can just do it and they just replicate it real quick and try to put it out there and the product ends up being not original not unique and not that so that that's the biggest pitfall you know it's like trying to just go into it thinking since i watch this person this person and this person that means i can do this and i can, and i'm gonna make money and i'm gonna i'm gonna be great you know so and to um, add on to what you're saying, like what a lot of people don't understand about that, and I even give even my own experiences, I did stuff like that. Like I saw, you know, uh, OG channel, saw Spawnway's channel, and it's like, at the same time, while I was doing my own take of gaming news, I said, you know what? Since I am competing in everything, I just said, you know what? I can make my own, you know, thumbnails and everything. And don't get me wrong, doing my own content creation, I had ideas that were original, but at the same time, I had to have a very real conversation with myself. And I had to tell, I had to tell myself, listen, I am competing for others' time. And whether you like it or not, whether you want to acknowledge this or not, like I could consider OJ a coworker, but at the end of the day, there is still a competition of time because not everyone has all the time in the world to watch everyone's YouTube video, everyone's Twitch stream, everyone's Mixer stream. It doesn't matter how unique you are, how different you are, they don't have time to watch everybody. So if you are, if they are getting what they, they, des they desire, what they want from somebody else already, they may not care to hear a second opinion about it. Unless you are just, that awesome and that done as you said most people aren't unless you are that yeah. awesome that charismatic and that dynamic most people are not going to want to listen in and the thing about it is it's like i try to tell myself i said okay now what is something that i am into that's why i took steps back and i even created um this this run with beast for breakfast and, and even that even came from you know, one a really close friend telling me that, hey, you should actually do a podcast mm -hmm. with this. And at first, it's like with Beats for Breakfast, I was actually just going to do a, me making beats er, early in the morning and build off that. But the thought of it being a podcast and everything and actually going forth with it, that was something that someone had to actually suggest to me. Mm -hmm. And when I actually, you know, went through with that, I actually went through with that yo i thanked them i thanked them wholeheartedly because it's like this is something that would not have happened unless someone put that idea towards me and i would say for someone else as a warning not even warning sign but a saving grace sign be humble and be teachable 
please be humble and be teachable in your in your full in being a full time content creator because you know if you're not marketable and you're not teachable you're not gonna be you're not gonna succeed. Yeah, and, and I think that it, it's really kind of like a slow buildup, I think, to being like a full time content creator. It's not something that's going to happen, you know, like that's going to happen overnight. Like it, it took me, like I said, many, many, many years. I mean, to be honest about to be a real full time content creator, to where you're actually making something like enough to be sustainable. Because back when I tried it the first time in 2012, 2013, I wasn't sustainable. It wasn't going to be sustainable for a long period of time. I was barely making just enough. And then even then it wasn't good enough. So it took me multiple years. I mean, it doesn't matter who you speak to, whether it's it's, you know, the guys that are in our circle, like a RGT or a spawn wave. I mean, it took them multiple years to build up. Now they're they're getting the ball rolling and it took me a little bit longer than them. And I kind of started a little bit before them. But um, at the same time, like one of the biggest things is like you need to just make sure, like I said, you're passionate. That's the biggest thing is that you're passionate about that topic and your passion is going to help you make better content. It's going to help you make better, better videos. If you just copy what somebody else is doing right off the back, you're not, you might not be as passionate about it. You're just copying somebody else. So therefore quality can dip over time. You know, I'm very passionate about these certain things like doing new stuff. Dude, I was passionate about that back all the way. I used to do an old show back in the day, Listen Up Gaming News. That was my first ever news show in like 2010, 2011. It was this really crappy Listen Up Gaming News, you know, back in the day. So I've been passionate about talking about gaming for a long time. I just focused and isolated it more because like you said, man, there's so much competition. There's so many other people doing stuff. And if they're already getting it from one place or if there's presentation that's better, whatever the case is, you got to be dynamic. You got to be flexible and teachable, right? Mm -hmm. I love, you know, rest in peace, Etika, man. He was one of my biggest Bruh. inspirations for starting streaming and having more of a personality, not just getting on camera and talking about this news topic, this news, topic, this topic, this topic, but actually talking to people and saying, showing them who, who I am a little bit more kind of, uh, you know, expressing that, you know, and I decided to kind of go in that route in addition to focusing and isolating in on what I truly love, you know, about gaming, which is RPGs, Japanese gaming and all that. And that worked out for me more so than just, I'm going to cover everything Sony and Microsoft and all the biggest news. Well, nobody, nobody might care to listen to me what, what they, what Sony has to say right. or what Xbox like has to say. So I'm not going to cover everything because some people just don't care, but they might want my opinion more on like a Bravely Default or a Final Fantasy or something like that. So I just kind of honed in and isolated and kind of uh, hit those targets in terms of what I wanted to do. And, you know, that worked out for me at least, you know. And it's funny you mentioned Etika. Etika was one of the reasons why I wanted to be on camera more because originally when I first started, I only did voiceovers. I only did voiceover content when I first started. And then when I came across more of Etika's channel, I saw it was like, this dude was having fun. And not only that, it hit home because he's only two years younger than me. Well, was two years younger than me, rest in peace. But in, And he was from my hometown. And I'm like, yo, I literally don't have an excuse. <laughs> mm -hmm. I literally don't have an excuse because I observe how I am when I'm like hanging out with some of my best friends and everything. And it's like, I'm almost a different person. I listen to some of my videos and I'm like, yo, I'm not the same person on camera than I am here. So it's like, when I started to get on camera, of course, like talking to the camera, as you mentioned earlier, is one of the hardest things to do. But after you, it's almost like the the old adage practice makes perfect after you you do it enough times you speak in the, towards the camera and you just put into really put inside your mind that you're not just talking to an inanimate object but you're actually mm -hmm. talking to real people and mm -hmm. you're going to be delivering this to real people it really makes talking to the camera more of more of your friend at that point yeah so, exactly exactly so but um uh, I want to just even share a warning. So even though I'm not doing full-time content creation yet, I have had the opportunity to make money off YouTube. I've had had to make money off uh, Streamlabs merch. And I even had money time to make money off uh, Patreon. So it's like, I've had multiple streams of income doing content creation. And I want to say, one of the warning signs that I really want to put out to you guys is to be consistent. Like literally whatever you do, whether it's, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, or daily, be consistent. Because it's not not it's not just about the algorithm forgetting about you, but it's more so about um, just letting people know that you are going to be around. When someone subscribes to you, and they are subscribing their time to you, 
and that is something that is very precious that is actually more precious than the money that they give you they're, sub they're subscribing their time to you so because of that it should be on you to say you know what i'm going to be consistent so that's why if you are if you ever have a delay or something it's okay things happen but just make sure you come out stronger and still be consistent because if you show a history of not being consistent then you are actually tainting your name and that's when people will decide to not trust the words you say when you say you're going to release content yeah exactly and and it hurts too because especially you know within the youtube algorithm because let's just yep. be honest here a lot of people want to get into you know in terms of like the pitfalls if you're not constantly hitting that youtube algorithm for those hits i mean it's going to be tough you know it's going to be tough especially in whatever field you're trying to talk in uh, being able to be prompt you know and make, making sure that hey if i'm going to do you know news videos or if i'm going to do something i need to make sure that i'm getting that content out when it's relevant right when people are searching for it because at the end of the day it's a search engine at the end of the day it is a search engine so second biggest but the, yeah so the the time that people are looking for like you said to invest into you it's gotta it's gotta intertwine with what content that you're doing in terms of how often you do it right depending on what you do and if you do theory videos or if you do something like that obviously it's not going to be as important as so as like making sure that you what you say your script whatever you're saying is you know is is good and intact but just make sure that your consistency intertwined with what content that you're doing if you're making theory videos you know you better have at least a, you know one or two theories each week that are fine crafted you know if you're doing news and you want to talk about gaming okay it better be stuff that's relevant to the topics that are coming up and you better be passionate about it better not be monotone and boring or whatever the case is i mean there are so many examples you know of other guys that do that i mean even like a guy that i work with too is like hmk you know he zelda um um, Zelda Kingdom Hearts, you know, really, I mean, you go to him for that type of stuff, right? People mm -hmm. will all immediately think about him, you know, um, so have a specialization, you know, have a specialization, what people, what you can be known for too. You know, I think that's also very, very important, you know, so people say, oh, JS, that's the JRPG Japanese dude, whatever the case Definitely. is, you know, but, you know, or like, you know, whatever, the, you know, whatever you need to specialize in, make sure you have that, because at the end of the day, you got to remember you're only one person, you're not a team. You know, you're not a team of people. You're not Game Explain. You know, you're not <laughs> you're not some of the other people that have so many so many people working for them. You're only one person, and you can only do so much with what you've got to do. Like whether your day job or school or whatever the case is. So take it one day at a time. Make sure your content is finally crafted, and just uh, like you said be consistent in the in the area that you're going for. Definitely, definitely. But um, I wanted to ask just a unique question because this is something that i thought about and i just said this would be fun to ask so what's one business practice that you know nintendo sony and microsoft do that you feel fellow content creators can follow suit with hmm that's an interesting question because you're talking about like a multi-billion dollar companies um in terms of for us right in, in yep. terms of that so i i would say um the one business practice maybe I've never thought about that. I really have never thought, I really never thought about that, but I will say this, don't be afraid. I would say, don't be afraid to let people know what you offer. You know what I'm saying? Too many, too many That's times. Big. That's big people actually. People will be like, oh, well, this person is e-begging or this person is doing this. I've always said, hey, look, if you offer something, you can talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Just like Nintendo, hey, we offer this, Microsoft and Sony, we offer this, you know, here, if you want to take it, take it. But you've got to advertise that too. Mm -hmm. So if you've got something to where you're offering, whether it's a Patreon or whether you're doing memberships or whatever the case is, if it's good and you know that the product is good in terms of what you're offering, whether it's gameplay, your time, whether it's training sessions, whatever, there's all sorts of stuff that people do. Make sure people know about that. Make sure people know about that, which is very different from just simply saying, oh, just give me this, you know, like give me this just because very different from that so make sure you let people know if you've got a pretty cool uh membership or something that you're trying to do let people know about that and don't be don't be afraid to let people know uh, but make sure that product that you're offering is is legit make sure that it's uh, that it's not just give me this just because but but you're actually doing something for that you know definitely definitely um i that's that's something that i would even th thought about actually so thank you for sharing that um the one thing that I would, and I was thinking about it as you were saying it. Um, the one thing that I would suggest that people can do, uh, that the I see these companies practice, is consistent brand identity. One of the things I see fellow content creators 
don't do is have consistent brand identity whether that is a consistent um logo in your thumb and your thumbnails or on your social media it's almost like one of the things that i feel that a lot of people do not do and i feel it's so important even if you don't even have it set up yet is own the website url of your uh of your name like if you have just own it even if you don't i look at it as an as a future investment what i do own is avidonsmith.com that's ownership and i feel as though if you are going to be a future content creator you owe it to yourself to make sure you own your url name so that nobody could back it date and steal what you have because for those of you who have not been watched, who have not known, uh, OJ and I, we spoke about this um, over the break. YouTube is very shaky right now. Twitch has shown it to be very, a little shaky at times. Mixer has definitely shown over the past few weeks to be very shaky. And it's just not a safe place to put all your eggs in one basket. So I would definitely say do what you can to own your name. Whatever you could do, own it. Absolutely. Great, great advice. Great advice for that, man. Seriously. So, um, no, th thanks. It's just something that I've, I've been doing a lot of reading. That's all I got to say lately. I've been just doing a lot of reading and because content creation is something that I'm make sure I want to go into. I'm going to go into this right. So it's something that I'm looking ahead and for the long, for the long term, not just for, you know, short terms, because last thing that i want is like i don't you know i don't want that that experience that you know you had you jump in and it's like you're barely making enough that that could be devastating and it, it, it was it was devastating <laughs> <laughs> so, so um i want to just ask one more question and this is a really interesting question because i've noticed that you know you do video a lot of video editing you are a video editor and your thumbnail creation game has been on point lately dude like i'm loving the thumbnails but, it's a little bit shaky lately, but it, 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 I, I'm trying. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. But I wanted to ask, um, what is another skill you developed over the years while doing YouTube? I think the biggest skill that I seriously, like the biggest skill for me at least, was my presence. Nice. That is so, and that is the skill. Like I said, I, maybe I'll do a compilation video over the each year of how <laughs> I talk and just see the difference of each year from 2011 all the way to this point. And mic presence, camera presence is one of the most important skills that I've learned. And I have learned something new each year. Each time that I've been, I've learned something new. So to me, mic presence, mic skill, speaking skill. Like even right now, what am I talking When I'm talking, I'm elevating my voice. I'm making myself sound interesting. Like it's, I know it sounds basic. Like, wait a minute. Well, everybody does that, but it's hard sometimes to kind of have this voice, especially when this is not your normal voice, right? When yeah. you want to just talk about something, you need to be passionate. So my presence, having a good illuminating voice, that's going to get people hooked and interested. Maybe even if they're not interested in what you're talking about, just because they see that you're interested, almost kind of like when you see somebody else laugh, you might not know what they're laughing at, but you laugh too. You know what I'm saying? But you I laugh. Know you're talking about. They're, I know their presence about. or their, their their voice tone so that's the thing for me is the skills that i've learned is just adjusting my voice the tone of it the presence on camera the presence on the mic even if you're not on camera but your mic presence as well you don't want to sound boring and each year i think i've gotten a bit better and to me it is a skill that you need to work on like you need to practice you need to work on it i don't know i can't tell you how many times i've recorded a video and said that sucks uh, no, no, that that's not going up. I've recorded sometimes a, a regular news video that gets a thousand views or 500 views. And I have recorded that video literally eight or nine times because I sounded horrible. And I'm like, well, I wasted six, five hours, but you know what? I got it the way that I wanted to get it, you know? So, yeah. but that skill and that level of being meticulous is, is what's, pre it's what's important because vocal tone does go a long way it's like if you sound monotone if you don't sound like you're interested a lot of people are not going to really want to li listen because you're not interested in what you, what you have it's like i i still remember to this day when um uh shout out to smash jt and um rgc85 smash this is when smash jt was doing his um channel reviews and he was reviewing my channel and rgt85 was in the chat it was like yo who is this guy and it just happened to be the video when Nintendo Switch broke the sales, this is um, when Xenoblade Chronicles was doing good and everything, and the background music I had playing at the same time was more ordained. And that's one thing I didn't, a skill that I did learn is like how to match music to how you feel to kind of like amplify 
you know the excitement so it's like i gotta um, get better at that by the way that's that's something i need to get better with as well you know it's i I would say it's just choosing the music that's gonna fit is fit the mode of your of your voice and it's i i guess it's like for me it's kind of cheating because it's like i've done music you know uh amateurly and even professionally uh for a good amount of years so like i had experience where i had to listen and match voices to the proper um songs for the for a good while but one of the things that i think that skill it has helped me for you know a long time over my years of content creation overall but you're right it's vocal vocal tone plays a huge role but um before we get too too far and just we'll give you guys one more break because we have one more section we're going to talk about that you guys are definitely going to be interested in so make sure you guys subscribe to oj if you haven't make sure you guys subscribe to this channel if you haven't because this this month of april as you have seen it, it's explosive so stay tuned looking over all the different ballots for the jury selection with different games of the year nominees for all the different categories man and this is one of the strongest years that we've ever had seriously i'm looking over the rpg category you guys did phenomenal we had so many selections we have monster hunter iceborne dlc expansion great job on that disco elysium that game kind of came out of nowhere all sorts of cool rpgs kingdom hearts that game took a while to come out but it was definitely worth it. Great games here, great RPGs, rich and deep with character customization and leveling. Oh man, this is gonna be a great category this year. I'm actually really excited about it. More this year than in previous years. So, all right guys, we'll be back again. All right, you guys, we can see y'all same time, same place. Tomorrow, we'll be going over more of the pre-nominee special rehearsals and everything with the crew. So it's gonna be very, exciting very exciting but um uh give me one second guys oh, give me one second oh, mr doug bowser hey mr doug bowser yes nintendo himself how's it going yeah yeah you know what we're actually just uh finishing up with the different nominees here um we just went over rpg of the year because that was really awesome but we got a lot of nintendo stuff too i mean there's plenty of stuff we got super smash brothers ultimate that was nominated a number of times we got fighting game we got all sorts of cool stuff game of the year nomination for that one huh i mean we kind of missed you guys last year because it was a little late but we guys uh you know you know but the guys here we got you in this year yeah absolutely uh we got like uh what was it luigi's mansion super mario maker those were great games those were released this year family category so you you know you guys are no stranger to that one yeah yeah so a lot of cool games Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're excited about it? Me too. Me too. Oh, yeah, and you're excited about Fire Emblem for the RPG category? <laughs> oh, yeah, you know what? I'm, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited about Fire Emblem for, the, um, for a category as well. Yeah. Yeah, for a category. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I mean, it, it got a nominate. Yeah, that was a great game this year, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really good. I mean, most people liked it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely it it, it it got a um it got a it, it it got it got a nomination yeah yeah okay yeah yeah absolutely absolutely hey and you know what guess what we got ring fit this year too that's a family game right that's that that's good families love that They're losing weight together you know no need to go to the gym right <laughs> those those memberships can be expensive can't they um all right yeah definitely definitely um we're wrapping things up um you know we're gonna do the nomination special absolutely so very excited to see all the nintendo stuff on there all right yeah yeah definitely absolutely all right yeah i'll see you at the show man it's gonna be pretty good all right bye okay the best strategy game nominees are fire emblem three houses all right guys great job once again we're getting closer and closer to the nomination special here i'm really excited you know Welcome back. Hope you guys enjoyed that break and hope you enjoyed more of OJ's content. As you can see, it's when it comes to uh, some content that OJ has. OJ has two two channels, actually. And he has a channel where he does gaming news, but he also has a channel where he does some parodies and he has some fun works. And I'm not going to lie, that UPS video was just brilliant. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> the Death Stranding career day? Yes. <laughs> 
absolutely absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant so so um we're gonna go ahead and just talk a little bit more about gaming music and that's something that your your village gets to hear almost daily daily on oj live through you know donations so i wanted just to ask it's like what was some of your favorite gaming tracks that you've heard through there or just in general that strongly impacted you yeah, you know, it's very interesting because, you know, people, it's like a jukebox kind of, you know, and whenever people come, they request a song. I think that adds a little bit more of a touch and a flair because you you learn songs that, I mean, so many times people say, what's, oh, what song is that? What song is this? And some of my favorite ones that kind of spark my memory in terms of just how awesome music can be for games is uh, Blue Dragon. There's a song called Eternity on Blue Dragon, <laughs> which is the Xbox 360 song. And it just, it's so ridiculous but it fits that game. If you remember playing Blue Dragon back in the day, whatever you, you know, the bosses were kind of ridiculous looking and that song just kind of fit what they were doing there. So that's one of the songs, if you haven't heard that, check it out. Shout out to my man, Juice Man, uh, who first reminded me about that, about that song, Juice Man Vaughn. Um, Eternity is great, uh, so I love that. I think like, you know, we talked a little bit about Chrono Trigger, um, that soundtrack, absolutely amazing. I think Chrono Trigger, it's probably done the best in terms of like, summing up what each character is whenever you hear their themes it's like yo that's that character like when you hear robo's theme his personality everything just kind of oozes with it when you hear glenn or frog, frog like his theme. his yeah. heroic or noble type of thing chrono has like a brave type of thing like we're gonna get this done today isla's theme is kind of like a bit wild but you know what i'm saying controlled at times but a bit wild you know so i love the different themes whenever they can pair that with the music so uh, chrono trigger um bravely default has always been awesome as well um i think xenoblade chronicles i mean i think that's some of the greatest music of all time you know counter um counter attack and a uh, more ordain and those uh, engage the enemy from the first one like when you're about to fight against something that's scary but at the same time like you can do it right like it's it's a bit like the the, the ambience is uh, odd right it has like that little like alien type of uh, uh vibe to it so I, I love i love that type of music man a lot of that stuff is really cool in my opinion like the jrpg stuff and the rpg stuff final fantasy always has had great tracks Final Fantasy. I mean, Final Fantasy Seven, Final Fantasy Eight, Man Final with the Machine Gun. Eight, oh my gosh, nine, great! You know, even great 10, Even Ten had good music. Twelve had good music. A lot of Final Fantasy had great music. I mean, and I think the best thing about Final Fantasy Thirteen might have been the music. You know, <laughs> everyone says that. Everyone might says Thirteen. I mean, the battle themes. Music. The battle themes great in that. that. That one's great. Or even like Final Fantasy Fifteen had some good tracks as well. Um, too, but I think like the classic Final Fantasies are, have always been great. Final Fantasy seven, six, seven, six, eight, six. seven, eight, and nine, like my favorite three. Six is a is an honorable mention though. I will give six is a huge honorable mention. Mm -hmm. But um, my first experience with Xenoblade Chronicles was actually Xenoblade Chronicles X. That was okay. my that was great, my first. Music. That that music surprised me heavily when I heard the themes because especially when I hit um um noctilum um mm -hmm. and you was just running through the jungle i was like yo this i was not expecting to hear like a soundtrack like this and the whole night and day renditions of these songs it's like i gotta give it i gotta give credit where credit is due to these composers like they put a lot of work into the orchestration of these musics and of these songs and it's it's something that it made me appreciate orchestrated music more because you know i grew up in an era where midi music was done really well so it's almost like i didn't need the quality the, the bigger quality of music to you know be on the forefront i just needed like good patterns and you know and good and good melodies so that's something that for me was um one of the biggest things that impacted me um some of the music that impacted me still to this day I will say it's actually probably like the, you know, like you said, the Final Fantasy games. Um, believe it or not, fighting games. Oh, fighting like, games have great, great soundtracks. Like uh, Blaze Blue, Guilty Gear, great, games like Blaze that are Blue, fantastic. Uh, Street Fighter Alpha Two. Yeah, uh, Street, Street Fighter. Fighter. Street Fighter has a make. That's some of the best music out there. Is Street Easily. Fighter. Which I think Street Fighter does the same thing Chrono Trigger does. Whenever you hear that theme of that person, you automatically think, okay, yeah, that's that theme. Like, it's like Third Strike, like yep. Jazzy NYC. That yep. track is so good, you can use it for two characters and you think of both of them, Alex exactly. and Ken. And Ken. 
even though they're different types of people alex is a much more grunge you know whatever but then you also think oh there's that other side of new york the rich side which is ken you know what i'm saying like then, so it, it's great and then you got killing moon for akuma so oh, it's yeah, like yes. yes so it's like i like that's fighting games are probably why i grew up with more gaming music and because i grew up in like in a music-based household it's like i gained more appreciation towards different things with that so i'm definitely with you when it comes to that but um we talked a little bit about xenoblade chronicles uh and we talked a little bit about um final fantasy um just to segue into the next question and we're getting new soundtracks for xenoblade chronicles definitive edition um, we're also getting a new soundtrack with Trials of Mana remake, and we're definitely getting a brand new soundtrack with Final Fantasy VII remake. Yeah, and we're these are remastering everything, so it's great. And it, and it's all fresh. These are mm -hmm. fresh tracks, and it's full of nostalgia. I'm not gonna lie, it's full of nostalgia. But I'm gonna ask this question: Do you think nostalgia is the only reason why these songs are iconic to us, or is it perhaps the music that we have is from a different generation? I, I think it, it's that, okay? They're nostalgic, but the composers of today, I really hope that the new younger composers learn everything that they can, because what I'm seeing is that JRPG music and just, you know, Western music, whatever the case is, it has a certain distinct feel. But if you don't learn from your predecessors, and if you don't learn, that can be lost. There has been all, I mean, you're, you came from a music household, right? There's been all sorts of forms of music that have been lost over time, mm -hmm. right? That, that, that happens. It's very, it's, it, it's a, it's a thing that can happen. So I'm very happy that at least at this point, it seems like a lot of people in terms of the music community, um, with the, you know, with the developers and the composers and all that, they really spend a lot of time on it in, in today's day. They really spend a lot of time. So you have new people, when you remaster these games, new people are brought in. Younger composers are brought in and they can learn and keep that flow going. You know what I'm saying? So right. I think that really um, it's not all nostalgic. It really is because that music really fits the tone of the game and really fits what they're doing. And then developers can take that and put it into new games like Bravely Default. The people at Rebo, big fan of Final Fantasy games, right? Big fan of all those. It was supposed to be a Final Fantasy game. It doesn't it's not distinctly Final Fantasy, but he learned everything in terms of from those games and applied it to what he's doing. And I think the next developer to the next new game, to the next new game, you know? So I, I think we're well, that's what we're seeing with a lot of the different music. So I don't think it's all nostalgic. I think it, it really is just phenomenal music done by great people and they're passing their traits on to the next gen and to the next generation of composers. I agree. It's like, it's something that, that you mentioned earlier and it's, you're echoing the same sentiments from a previous episode is theme based. It's like we come from a generation of theme based music, of music of themes. Like you hear a theme with somebody, it's like, oh wow. Like I know that this is a theme. It's not even just, I wouldn't even, this is just to kind of like break the lines of just talk about video games. You think about the time, the time periods that we was in. You know, uh, think about um, Dragon, if you watch Dragon Ball Z from back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, when um, and this is, I know I'm, for those of you who've been following episode, I know we're echoing the same the same sentiments of Bruce Falconor with the Vegeta theme. Or oh yeah, you, you think about um, the crazy piano, exactly. <laughs> or you, or, Vegeta's the Super Saiyan theme. I love it. Or if you watch um, Death Note L's theme, it's like there's so many there's so many different themes of from anime to cartoons, even. Um, if you watch American cartoons, Batman the animated series, like that theme song from the beginning, the X-Men theme song, it's like we grew up with theme songs. And I feel like the that same technique was used in video games. And kind of what you're saying, I'm almost feeling like that technique is almost a loss, is a loss technique, it's a loss art in it, this day and age. It, it could become one because the thing about it is that Western games don't do that as much they just they kind of go with the cinematic you know lord of the rings type of feel like I, I think a good example of this is like you look at castlevania right look at castlevania music from back in the day yeah and look at the the new castle when they rebooted castlevania and put it on the ps3 and 360 what is that music in that game <laughs> you know i mean i like castlevania lords of shadow i like it but that music is it just sounds like god of war and then god of war just sounds like something i mean god of war has its own distinct themes too and that that's great music and all that but none of it's memorable in my opinion at least i don't i, I don't know like the theme of kratos back on the ps2 i remember that 
but I don't remember the new God of Wars music as much, you know, and I don't remember some of these new games. And even with some of the new Japanese games that are coming out, sometimes that aren't reboots or, re or remasters or remakes. Like I'm looking at some, of, I'm hearing some of these tracks and I'm like, okay, that, that, that sounds all right. But you know, maybe it could be a little bit better here and there. So I think that's why, I mean, like we said, like with the nostalgia that comes back, but man, it does seem like it could be, it, it, it could be, but there, there's so many times where I'm like, I'm playing some games that I, I don't remember the soundtracks at all. I don't remember anything, but I swear, I can, re I can recall everything with Final Fantasy games, like Final Fantasy VII, the music. I can recall everything with Chrono Trigger. And these are games sometimes, you know, I haven't played them forever, whatever the case is. I can remember the names, like the actual track names. You know, I think Devil May Cry does a good job with some of its music too, you know. um, in terms of what they what they do there. Um, but a lot of times, man, like you just kind of forget stuff. You know, I you just kind of do. And you, it's I feel like it's something that they're not trying to pay attention to as much as they as much as they used to. I feel like it's something that how should I put this? I feel they could do a better job, better. Mm -hmm. But it's. At the end of the day, I don't know, you know, their budget. I don't know who they have on and I don't know their artistic goal. Like, I don't know what they're going for, per se, when it comes to actually releasing better music. But hopefully, hopefully we'll see, you know, a change. Yeah, yeah, uh, hopefully we will. I mean, I mean, we've seen it before. And like, even some of the games that I played, like, I'll, I'll, that I like, you know, like I can Fallout, for example. I like Fallout, but I mean, I don't really like the music it's like like who cares like really <laughs> <laughs> you know or something like that i mean i know like like bioshock is coming to switch and stuff like that bioshock's great bioshock infinite one of my favorite games. i don't remember anything i don't remember any of the music in bioshock infinite. <laughs> I, can't. And I love that game you know and I, I can't remember a single thing about the music in that game you know i would say indie games are doing their thing when it comes to music i'll say indie games do do their thing when it comes to video games though like the messenger fantastic music monster boy fantastic music it's like a lot of the indie games that i actually sit down and play i will say they do have a good they do have a good music selection absolutely i think one of the tracks that was really great um to me that that just caught my eye like or just my eye ears was um steamroll dig 2 that initial theme it's just like a cool metal like dun, 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 dun. like you just you just know like okay this is gonna be a game where it can be chill but it can get kind of crazy you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying what's happening here it oozes style in terms of what they were kind of going for with the text and everything so that game really i remember i remember the music in terms of like the theme like the main theme when you're in the town i remember that so much and i only played the game one time you know i didn't I mean, it's not that super long game so the fact that i still remember that after all these years like i can re recall the music that's when indie games i think they do a good job they have to they have to make up for not having you know the <laughs> graphics and all the other stuff so they better have some catchy tunes i mean shovel knight is another game like shovel you remember the shovel knight. you know like you remember that stuff right like it's, it's very easy to remember the music in shovel knight too like the name theme and everything like that but um, I'm gonna ask uh, a different question because like, you said like that it caught that caught your attention. Like I want to say, what makes a gaming original soundtrack stick out from the others to you? I, I think to me is the the difference in theme, like themes. Like if you've got that theme that really sticks, that main song that everybody can kind of go to, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's what makes to me like stand out. Like if you if you don't have it, like and if it's not catchy and if it's not there. Man, it, it's, it's tough for me to remember, but I think that's what it is. Like, for example, like Fire Emblem Three Houses, you know, that the edge of eternity, you know, like reach for my, like that you just know as soon as it, it boots up, that's the theme. So I think that's it for me, man. When you have that main theme and then of course the other tracks that kind of play a part of it, but what, what sets the tone when you first boot up that game, you know? What makes you remember? And that's, it's funny you said it because that's where Rob Regal and I had like, uh, I'll give it I'll give it to him on the opening, but in terms of overall soundtrack, I disagree with him. But for the opening of Final Fantasy VIII versus Final Fantasy Seven. Like the over the opening of Final Fantasy Seven, I would say in the remake it gives you chills because of of nostalgia, but in terms of how Final Fantasy VIII opens up, like to this day, that is iconic. I'm not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. Like that opening, that really opening theme with the with the with the uh, with the opera, that is something that you haven't heard in RPGs, and it, I feel as though Square Enix has done a fantastic job in terms of paving the way in many different levels when it comes to RPGs. Not even just outside of music, it's um, 
somebody was just talking about Final Fantasy 7. They said Final Fantasy 7 is overhyped and everything. And I know that it's all opinions at the end of the day, but the, my, my first response was, excuse me, but how old are you? And I had to ask that question. And I said, that explains it. Because I said, and I said, that's not a shot towards you because you're fine to, to believe Final Fantasy 9, 10, or whatever Final Fantasy you like is better than 7. You're fine to believe that. But if you cannot dismiss the fact that Final Fantasy 7 paved the way for 8, 9, 10, and the rest of these games. Final Fantasy 7 paved the way for 3D RPGs. Jeez. It did. You know? It really did to have mainstream success to be huge games. So it, I mean, it's it's I mean it's not overrated. Maybe people can have that opinion, but at the time nobody was saying that. You know, nobody was. It was the first. It was the first RPG to hit the Western, uh, the in the West that had um, that was a T rating that had um, profanity in it. It was the first JRPG that had uh, an african-american as a main character like you didn't have none of this stuff in jrpgs growing mm -hmm. up a lot of stuff growing up you didn't have none of this so it's like it it square enix showed um proper represent you know representation they try to include different styles of music there was so many things that final Fantasy 7 did is why it's one of my favorite games of all time because I could always go back to it and it's like I could find more things to appreciate. I'm like, wow, they this came out in '97. And, and the thing about that, when people say, especially when these big games are overrated, you'll never hear. I mean, maybe they say it in person, but you'll never hear a developer who was there at the time or people that were there at the time. It's like saying, okay, oh, Mario 64 is overrated because Odyssey comes out and it's. But Mario 64 at the time, it set, it paved the way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's like saying like the old school tires back in the day were like, you know, or like the first stone wheels were overrated because they're nowhere near as good, or maybe you don't think they're as good as now. But there has to be a start. You know, there has to be something that paves the way, something that really was innovative and broke through. And that's what Final Fantasy was with the music, with the gameplay, with the themes. There has to be a start. So you can't overrate something when there was nothing really, there wasn't much to go off of in the first place in terms of how to do this right with the technology, with within the budgets, three disc type of game, you know, what they were trying to do. I mean, it's, I always find it incredible when people try to make those claims, it's like, but you weren't there at the time. Where do we go from here? You know what I'm saying? Somebody has to start it. How can you sit here and say that this is overrated when they're the ones who literally broke into it? You know, in terms of getting things done and knowing that there is a market here in the West, you can be, you can make an RPG and it can do crazy numbers and it can have an African American character in there. It can do these things, you know? Like, so I don't know. I've, I've always, even if I don't like the game as much, it's like, I don't like Mario 64 as much as other people, but that doesn't mean it, it, it didn't. It's not, it deserves its credit, you listen, know? Same thing with Final Fantasy, you know? Listen, so it's all about that Quest 64. It's all about that Quest 64. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Quest 64. <laughs> Quest 64 showed you exactly why nobody made RPGs <laughs> on, the, on the 64. It's not a, outside of a, you know, there's Ogre Battle, there's a couple from Nintendo, there's a, there's, you know, a Paper Mario, you know, there's a couple good ones, but outside of that, they were all on PlayStation, you know? And so many developers said, oh man, look at Final Fantasy. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna throw our, throw our hand into it, you know, and try to do something mm -hmm. good there so or something but no i would say um outside of that i want to just say one we are out closing out so i wanted to first thank you for coming on to the show and two i want to just give the mic towards you if you have any last words to the audience like any words of encouragement or anything that you feel as though you could suggest to anybody Absolutely, man. I mean, depending on the time that you guys are watching this, I know times have been rough for a lot of people out there. Um, and the content creators here on YouTube, content creators on Twitch, all of our um, all of our uh, circle of people that we work with, man, we're all trying to do our best. Um, and I think that if you apply that same energy, apply that positive energy to anything that you do, whether you're interacting with people, whether you're making content, whether you're dealing with family members, whatever the case is, try to be a positive force, try to create something, try to use your time wisely. Um, and I think that's probably the, the best thing. Use your time wisely, create something good, put smiles on people's faces, do the best that you can and uh, try to get through it, you know, for, for everybody in terms of making sure that, um, 
making sure that you do the best that you can in terms of anything that you do, you know? So I just want to share that positive message with people. Go out there and be the best, you know? Go out there and be the best and do what you can do in order to improve your life and in order to improve your family's lives or your users, whether you're another content creator watching this, do what you can to be there. And um, hopefully we can all get through all these times together, man. Definitely, it just, it takes one. It's like, if you make a step, you're gonna encourage somebody else to make a step. So just keep doing the best that you can. So with that said, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Tune in next week for next week's episode. We're going to have um, Kat, a casual gamer, joining us and going to talk more about some more gaming, music and business. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And most of all, most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avedon and Player Essence, and we are out. Peace.